When you enable the Swift 6 language mode, it can be really tricky to write what should be trivial code. The compiler very, very, very carefully analyzes your code and it will tell you this is not safe because there's a potential that there's multiple tasks or multiple isolation contexts accessing this state at the same time and that could be a data race. And you have to fix this and a common way to do this is with actors. In this video, we're going to take a look at something that's not an actor. We're going to take a look at mutex because mutex is something I would say more lightweight or more flexible in some ways than an actor, or at least it makes it so that we don't have to introduce concurrency everywhere in our code. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure to do that right now. If you like the video, make sure you do that. And if you want to really understand everything that goes on with Swift 6 and Swift Concurrency, make sure to check out my course and my book, which are both linked in the description down below. So without further ado, let's dig into Xcode and take a look at how we can use mutex to solve our data race problem. In this sample project, I have very little code, but I do have a problem. Let me start off by saying that this is very much a fabricated problem. I should probably solve this issue in a different way if this were my actual code. The point therefore is not that I tell you exactly how to implement a type called counter and how to use that from a detached task like I'm doing in this code. It's probably a really bad idea to detach anyway and there's no reason I should be incrementing asynchronously. However, the error that we see here called non-sendable type counter and implicitly asynchronous access to main actor isolated property cannot cross actor boundary. In other words, our counter is not sendable. It's not safe to take our counter from the main actor and put it anywhere else, which is what we're doing here. We create counter on the main actor, and then we're passing it into a detached task. From there, we're also mutating it, but that's really not the point of this error. So the issue or the pattern that we're trying to solve here is I have this main actor isolated property that's not sendable, and I want to use it away from the main actor. If we take a look at what counter is, it's an observable um, and probably, let's just get this right out of the way, I should be doing this. Annotate that whole type to the main actor and now our problem is solved. This is what I would do in the real world. However, let's assume that for some reason I cannot do this because I want to be able to mutate my counter from anywhere that's not the main actor. I want to be able to do this from a background context and I want to be able to do this without impacting the main thread at all. Think something more complicated like data processing. So assuming that main actor cannot be applied here, what can we do? Well, if we want to be able to pass something from the main actor to another isolation context, the type needs to be sendable. For a class to be sendable, I have to make it a final class. And now our build fails saying stored property count of sendable conforming class counter is mutable. So that's somewhat of an issue, right? We do have the macro getting in the way here and all of that. So if we turn off observability for a moment, we'll actually see that the error moves and it's on the count property. This doesn't change the fact that we have mutable state and we cannot have that on a sendable class. As soon as a sendable class has mutable state, it's not safe to be passed across actor boundaries. And that's where we could either make this whole type into its own actor, which works, but we can't make that observable, which is one problem. Another problem would be even if we were able to make it observable, interacting with counter would then be asynchronous because we'd be putting messages in the actor mailbox. These are all things that we don't want to do. What we do want to do is introduce a private var mutex. And that is going to be a mutex that holds on to, in this case, an integer. But it could be anything else because mutex is a type that is generic. And that means that it can hold on to pretty much anything. We could use the mutex to protect an array of integers. We could use it to protect strings. We could use it to protect our own types. There's really a lot of things that we can put in a mutex. In this case, I'm putting an integer in there. Now, this does mean that I no longer have the ability to just increment my count. 
New taxes under the hood use something called locks. And that means that if somebody obtains access to a lock, everybody that also wants to access what's wrapped in the mutex has to wait for that lock to become available. So what I do is I say mutex dot with lock, and that will give me whatever I wrapped. So in this case, my count, and it's a closure. So we use the in keyword. For incrementing, I can say count plus equals one. For decrementing, same thing, except count minus equals one. Oh, hold on, that's a bit of a typo there. That's supposed to be with lock and with lock again. Our build is actually still failing right now because we don't have a count property, right? We fixed the problem here with the detached task, but we no longer have a count that we can access. And that is a bit of a tricky one because what we could in theory do is actually say var count, give it an integer, give it a getter, and then we return mutex dot with lock, which means that we might have to wait for the lock to become available because we're already incrementing or decrementing. And, and we can actually return something from our lock. So I can write return count. And now I have my count. And here's where I want to run my app and see if everything works as expected. Because what I'm expecting to happen here is that whatever I click, increment or decrement, that my text is going to update. But that is not working at all. So that's a bit of an issue. I can actually force an update here by saying at state, just to show you that there is something happening. Uh, and I'll use a UUID here. And then whenever we increment or decrement, I will also assign a new value to my ID. It's a bit silly, but it will make sure that increment and decrement work. As we can see, it still doesn't actually work. Why is that? Am I not updating my counter? I am printing, so that is working. So what is wrong with the view? That is really the question right now. Oh, I actually know. We're not accessing ID anywhere uh, in our view body. So that means that Swift UI essentially makes it so that we don't um, redraw when ID updates. Now we do access ID and Swift UI will update and we can actually see that first number in front of the UID change. So we are updating the counter. That was the whole point of adding this ID but we're not seeing changes unless we're also changing something else. And that kind of ties into how the observable macro works in this case. The observable macro wants us to register when we access a property, and it wants us to register when we mutate a property. When you don't specify a getter or setter like I would normally do, uh, this is all generated by the macro. But because we made get count a computed property, what we actually need to do is say self dot access key path count. This will make it so that Swift UI will know that I accessed the counter. And so it will respond to changes to the counter when the observable macro sees any changes. So things still don't work. And that's because we're not changing any properties on our class. We are getting the count, but we're never actually telling Swift UI or we're never actually telling the observable framework that we modified our count. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce one more method and that is a set count method. We're going to set to a new, yeah, new value. This will of course use our mutex and we need to do one more thing. Whenever we're about to set the count, we need to say self dot with mutation. We pass it our count key path, and then we perform whatever mutation we want to perform. So we obtain our lock and we update count. 
Now, why did I add a function here and why did I not just do this? The reason is when we do something like plus equals, that is a simultaneous get and set, and that can be problematic with mutexes. So what I would recommend you do is if you use mutexes and you want to protect an integer, for example, is you never specify a get and set. Instead, you can actually get a getter like this, kind of okay, but you don't um, specify a set separately. So you can't do count plus equals. That's kind of the point. So by calling set count with a new value, we can actually do this all safely. So we're going to change increment to use our new set count function uh, to make sure that we always correctly inform observable about our changes. There we go. So now we call set count, which uses with mutation so that observable knows what we're doing. And we're using our mutex lock to make sure that we don't have data races. And now things work exactly as expected. So it's a little bit of bookkeeping, it's a little bit of work. The added benefit here of using a mutex sometimes is really that you reduce the amount of concurrency that you're introducing in a code base. If you're doing this to a type that you're only using from the main actor, which is what my example does, you might as well annotate the type with the main actor because there's no reason for us to want to force these accesses to another isolation context or to another thread. We're completely fine with mutating on the main thread and we should really just let that happen. However, if you are writing a type that does need to be accessible from any isolation context and you can't make it an actor because you don't want to introduce a lot of concurrency, then using uh, mutex actually makes a lot of sense. So this is everything that you would need to do to have a counter that uses a mutex under the hood. It's quite a bunch of work, but it's rather nice that we don't have to use an actor. So in this video, you actually saw how making something sendable can be a little bit tricky if it has mutable state. We could use a main actor annotation, but we don't always want to do that. In those cases where we don't want to make things into a main actor isolated class or something that is an actor of itself, we can make it sendable without going unchecked or anything like that by using something like Swift's mutex. As you saw, mutex uses a lock under the hood, which basically means that if I want to access whatever state the mutex is wrapping, I obtain the lock. I have my access to the object, and then when I'm done, the lock is released, and the next uh, object in the queue can access the mutex's lock. And so the queue kind of builds and everybody gets access eventually. If you liked learning about this, make sure to like the video as well. If you're not just subscribed, make sure to change that right now. And again, if you want to master Swift concurrency, check out my course and book, which are both linked down below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.